Hey guys, hello everyone, welcome back. This is International Master Sam Givon here. And today we're going to be dealing with some openings. Uh, more specifically, I wanted to present you with an opening uh, repertoire against the French defense from White's perspective. The French defense for E4 players tends to be a very annoying opening to deal with after the moves uh, E4 and E6. Um, many people struggle with white to prove anything against the French defense. It's considered to be a very solid opening for black. So in this video, I'm going to be presenting uh, once again an opening repertoire in the boundaries of the length of this video, uh, starting with the move d4, d5. And in this position, my recommended move, especially for uh, quick time controls games and for club players, instead of the more popular moves, uh, such as knight c3 or knight d2 or e5 I'm going to be recommending this very little studied move bishop to d3 in itself not a very surprising move very logical move white's developing a piece defending the pawn which is under attack nothing so special in itself about this move but first of all this move is very little studied by the black players so in many cases when I'm playing this move myself as white I'm surprising black already on move number three because it's a, almost an unknown move most of them spend most of their time preparing against the other moves which are far more popular so when you play the move such as bishop d3 you already kind of put them a little bit off balance perhaps even you force them to think on their own, you get them out of their comfort zone. And also, this is a very poisonous move which contains a lot of little nuances and traps that you can try to count on when you play against uh, black. So first of all, in this position, let's count the amount of options, the logical options that black has. Basically, black can play any logical French defense type of move. So that would be either knight f6, d takes e4, or c5. These are the three most frequently occurring moves in a, in a practical game. Other moves have been also been played, but have been um, very, very seldomly seen and are, I, in my opinion, much less logical than those three options, which are basically against every uh, line in the French defense, these are Black's options, so it's not an exception here. So let's, die, let's start uh, one by one covering those moves. Let's start with the move c5. Very, very logical move. Black is using uh, the opportunity to attack White's center, a very typical move in the French defense. Also, attacking our undefended pawn on d4. In this case, we are going to take the pawn on d5 and present black with a very difficult question of how to recapture the pawn on d5 or even he can consider taking the pawn on d4. Taking the pawn on d4 is considered to be a bad move because here white can simply take on e6, play knight f3, and start targeting this pawn on d4. Actually, right now, it's actually a threat to take on d4. For example, if black plays a logical move such as knight f6, white can take on d4. If queen takes d4, there is this very well-known tactical idea of the discovered attack, and white wins the queen. And basically, even if black tries to defend this pawn, white's plan always revolves around trying to put pressure on it, perhaps moving that bishop away, perhaps maneuvering the knight to b3, and white enjoys a very pleasant game. So c takes d4 is considered to be a bad move. The second move, which I'm going to be presenting you, is actually a very, very tempting move, which I've been facing a lot of times, is the move queen takes d5. This is especially tempting move since it hits the pawn on g2 and the pawn on d4, both of which are undefended. So it looks like Blake is about to win material. But at this position, we have prepared a nice little surprise for them. 
We are going now to play the move knight to c3, developing the knight, attacking his queen, and presenting him with the option of which of our pawns should he capture. The most obvious and the most tempting move would be queen takes g2, hitting our rook. Looks like black is actually completely winning, but it turns out that after bishop e4, all of a sudden his queen is trapped. Amazingly, black is already losing on move number 6. If they don't fall for this, they should take the pawn on d4. After which, white is going to have a lot of initiative, a lot of compensation for the pawn because of his much superior development. He can play the simple move knight to f3, followed by short castles, which is fine. But even more concrete is the move knight to b5 threatening both the queen and the square on c7, after which black is already in, in quite a lot of troubles. For example, queen d8 is being met with bishop f4, another developing move with a tempo, threatening knight c7 check. Black has to play knight to a6, and white here can play queen e2, followed by long castles with some pressure on the black queen. This is actually an idea that is going to be reoccurring in these type of positions. In a lot of these variations, white is going to be aiming to castle long and go for some quick attack in the center. Keep that in mind. By castling long, we are accelerating the development of our pieces and we can immediately post some tactical problems to our opponent, especially when the D file is opened up. So queen takes d5 is already a dubious move. So after e takes d5, we saw that c takes d4 is not a very good move. Queen takes d5 also leads to some problems for black. So in my opinion, the only reasonable move here is e takes d5, which is um, also the most frequently played move by grandmasters in this position. After which the game is much more calm and positional. White has two options. I'm going to be recommending the move D takes C5, which I believe is the most uh, convenient and comfortable move to play in a, comf in, a, um, in a practical game. Because after this, we basically going to be presenting him with the isolated pawn on D5, which we will try to put pressure against in the long run. And White's development here is extremely smooth and easy. So Bishop takes C5, Knight of three. Knight f6, castles, threatening rook e1 check, so black must also castle. And one example reline goes h3, stopping black from pinning our own knight. Black should do the same thing, stopping us from pinning his own knight. h6, knight to c3, putting extra pressure on the pawn on d5, and after knight c6, Bishop f4. We can basically see that white's development here is almost finished. His next moves are going to be something like rook to e1 followed by queen d2. Perhaps the other rook should join into the center into d1 when white is uh, very comfortably positioned. His plan in the long run should be to put pressure on the isolated pawn and most of his play is going to be concentrated in the center of the board. So also this line is uh, fairly comfortable to meet. So that basically wraps up the move c5. Second option for black would be the move knight to f6. And I want you to pay extra attention to this move because this move is altogether very different from the move c5 because now black is attacking our pawn on e4 and he is forcing us to go e5, closing up the position. So in this variation the game is going to be uh, much more uh, closed in its nature, much more maneuverings, much more, uh, much more pawn play. So knight f to d7 is forced. White simply plays knight to f3, black goes c5, attacking white center. In this, in, in this type of positions we are going to be very similar type of games to the advanced French, but with one small detail, white, white now plays the move pawn to c3, defending his pawn on d4, 
It would be a very bad idea for black to go c4, as it would release all the tension, white could very comfortably go bishop c2 in order to keep his long diagonal. Black plays knight c6, and white simply castles. Now if we compare this position with a very similar theoretical position uh, from the knight d2 French defense, here the move queen b6 would be very unpleasant for us if white would already have his knight positioned on d2. Because in this scenario, scenario it would be very awkward to defend the pawn on d4, which is under attack. And obviously white doesn't want to take on c5 since it would break his central formation completely. That is why in this position, we are actually going to take advantage of the fact that our knight is still on b1 and play the very convenient move bishop to c2. With this move, not only white is protecting the pawn on d4 one more time, so we have enough defense on this pawn. Also, we prepare potentially the idea to go at some point queen d3 after his king is castled with some threats to checkmate the black king. An exemplary line can go bishop e7. And now a possible plan for white can be a rook e1. The idea of this move is pretty subtle. To support the pawn on e5 in anticipation of any pawn breaks by black, such as f6. And also, in the future, it might prepare this typical uh, knight maneuver the type of maneuver that you see very frequently in the Rui Lopez or the Italian game is also featured in this position. And after something like castles, white can already go queen d3, once again threatening checkmate, and it's basically forcing black to commit some kind of a weakening move. For example, g6, you see now that black has some weaknesses around his king position that we can exploit later on. And now after a move such as a3, which I think is a very useful move to make in such positions, avoiding any kinds of forks against our queen and bishop, white should follow with the plan knight d2, knight f1, and perhaps knight e3, knight g4, aiming at those weak squares around the king that we were mentioned later on, with potentially a very strong attack against black. Also pay attention to the fact that black faces those typical development issues that he has in the French defense, the blocked bishop on c8 and the rook on a8, which find it very difficult to be developed into the game. So queen v6, so that basically actually wraps up the whole uh, knight f6 move. The move queen b6 in this position is not forced, but if he also plays other moves such as bishop e7, we can follow the same plan. Rook e1 followed by knight d2, knight f1. That's a very uh, um, simple and effective plan. So let us move on to the final move of this video, which I believe is also the most important and the most forcing move. D takes e4. This is very logical since black is now forcing us to recapture with the bishop on e4 and thus winning a tempo with the move knight f6. And now our bishop has to decide where to go. So this is a very important moment. I want you to pay extra attention since in this position we are going to be playing the move bishop to f3. Kind of changing completely the utility of this bishop. If before that we were posting this bishop mainly on d3 trying to play for an attack on the king side, in this variation we are going to be positioning our bishop on f3 with a completely different idea to put pressure on black's queen side, making it difficult for black to develop. A completely different strategy. So let's see what happens after bishop f3. Black's most principled and also strongest move in this position uh, is c5, immediately attacking white center. Once again, like in other lines, black should immediately attack white center before he can consolidate his position. If black doesn't want to contest the center immediately, 
and prefers kind of slow development, he can do something like bishop e7, which is fine. But then white should follow this very simple setup, knight e2, because since the knight cannot go to f3, that's a very logical continuation. Short castles, short castles. And white's plan in this position involves once again putting pressure on the queen side. His next moves could be pawn to c4, knight to c3, getting your bishop developed to either f4 or e3. And basically positioning your pieces towards the queen side where white's main advantage um, is being placed. So bishop e7 is a little bit passive and timid. Is, it should not bother us too much. Uh, there are some other options here for black. Against and many of them we should just follow the same setup of 92 and short castles. So let's focus on black's kind of strongest and the most principled move c5. Attacking our pawn on d4. It would be a very bad idea to try to capture on c5 since black will then take our queen on d1 and force us to make a very unfortunate decision, either to lose our right to castle or get our bishop back from its active outpost on f3. So white follows his plan with knight to e2. Black plays knight to c6. Please pay attention that if at any point black decides to take, with the, take the pawn on d4, we always aim to recapture with our queen in order to once again accelerate our development of pieces, potentially aiming to castle long. As I've mentioned earlier, very often we aim to castle long in these positions, especially when the d-file gets opened up. Black plays knight to c6, putting even more pressure on the pawn on d4, and white defends the pawn on d4 with the developing move bishop to e3. Here we have a fairly important uh, crossroads. Black has a couple of options. A move which is very tempting and uh, also a move that I've been facing fairly frequently myself in practice is knight to d5. Trying to eliminate, uh, deprive basically white's bishop pair. But this move is being met with a very concrete and um, tactical line. We are now going to be giving away our strong bishop on d5. Black is forced to take with the queen as the move e takes d5 just loses the pawn for no compensation after d takes c5. And now, very similarly to the line that we have already seen before, when, the, when you see a black queen on d5, in these lines he always play knight to c3. We are not going to be trying to defend this pawn, because if black now takes that pawn, white plays rook g1, the black queen here is actually not going to be trapped, but she's going to be extremely missing on the queen side. So for example, if black takes another pawn on h2, white can play bishop to f4, followed by knight to b5, and already you can see that the threat of knight c7 is basically unstoppable. Black is already losing. So knight d5 seems like a tempting move, which you, which you also might face fairly frequently in practice, but is objectively dubious. Another move, which is, I believe, also fairly principled and being played against me and other players, is e5 trying to strike in the center immediately, trying to take advantage of the fact that white doesn't have a knight on f3 like he usually has. So less, he basically has less control over e5. So we should accept this upp the opportunity to win a pawn, d takes e5. Unfortunately, we'll have to lose our right to castle. Queen takes d1, king takes d1, knight g4. And in this position, white is temporarily a pawn up, probably not for very long, but also you see that black structure is fairly compromised here. We should play here the move knight to d2, just continuing our development, perhaps aiming to one of these f squares in the future. And after black recaptures our pawn on e5, we can play rook e1 with some ideas of discovered attacks against um, the black king. 
where black is uh, let's say not fully comfortable in this position this is regarding the move e5 and finally the most important move c takes d4 now it's time to cover that move knight takes d4 once again if black takes on d4 like i mentioned earlier we always should be aiming to take with the queen on d4 with the idea to castle long very quickly after which i want you to take a look at this position very briefly because this type of position which might look equal or kind of drawish in first glance because there are no queens and no pawns in the center is actually what I consider to be almost a losing position for black since it's nearly impossible to develop these pieces properly into the game because of the immense pressure that those bishops uh, create on the queen side this is a very good illustrative position uh, to our repertoire so black should definitely avoid that black should play this clever move knight to e5 here with the idea perhaps to take on f3 and deprive white of his bishop pair and also eliminate that dangerous bishop we should follow kind of continue our development with knight to c3 after which it would be definitely a mistake for black to take on f3 immediately because then we can once again take with the queen and go very quick with the move long castle for example bishop b4 looks tempting but after the move long castles all of a sudden the black queen is under some pressure and black is facing troubles so the the right thing to do for black is to make a useful waiting move for example bishop to e7 developing another piece White really wants to castle long in this position, so he, sh he still should go queen to e2. After which, now black can take on f3. Queen takes f3, which is basically the same position as we have been, s as we saw before, only with the difference that black has one more tempo, which means that he can now safely uh, castle his king. White follows his plan with long castling, and this is the one of the most important type of positions that we are going to be seeing when we are when we will play bishop d3 so white has lost his bishop pair he's not too sad about it because black's bishops at the moment are not being uh, very active also white has this unpleasant pressure in the center against black's queen so black is now forced to move his queen once again and white's plan is to push his pawns on the king side very similarly to the sicilian defense for example and his prospects of a successful attack here are uh, very good in practical games white had a lot of nice victories uh, in this position to the more attentive viewers of this video i'm i'm, I'm recommending watching some games by grandmaster vladimir onishchuk in the database from this position to get a better idea of how white can attack in such positions uh, so this uh, wraps this video up we covered all of black's options after the move bishop to d3 knight f6 c5 and d takes d4 hope that you enjoyed this introduction to the bishop d3 french and hope you to have a lot of successful games with it see you guys take care bye bye